Oracle VM architecture. So let's understand what all components Oracle VM solution is made up of and how they interact with each other. So here I've depicted a diagram. If you look at the bottom mouse layer, it is called as a storage layer, which is more of a external storage. So the storage could be a storage area network. It could be NFS or any other storage in the network that you have attached supported by Oracle VM. And then here you would see something like the hardware. So these are the physical machines or the servers using which you leverage the Oracle VM capability. So this provides the infrastructure. So storage is the base infrastructure, but on top of that, to execute running your VMs, this is where the resources comes from. So there are two resources shown over here, but you can have n number of server physical machine infrastructures. So what does it contain? It contains the host hardware, which includes the CPUs, the RAMs, the network, and optionally, the disk attached to those machines. And then these machines are accessed via an Oracle VM server through what you call as a hypervisor based technology. If the VM server is Linux based, then the Zen hypervisor will be used. But if the server is Spark based server, then the Spark based hypervisor will be used to access the machine via the Oracle VM agent for that VM server. So basically the Oracle VM server will communicate with the physical hardware of the servers using what you call as VM agent. VM agent is the one which connects with not only the VM server but also what you call as the VM manager. So VM server is the one that provides the hypervisor based technology to share the base resources and those resources are depicted on the VM manager. So VM manager is a tool that Oracle provided in the virtualization that complements the VM server to access these base storage and these physical infrastructure via VM agent. And you can see a list of all those resources in a graphical user interface for VM manager. The VM manager itself can be deployed in a Linux based operating system and it consists of a SQL Enterprise Database and a WebLogic server and finally a browser based GUI you can access. You also have an option of character user interface for the VM manager. The communication happens through a SSH layer via the browser. So I'm going to quickly take you through the GUI of Oracle VM Manager. At the same time, I'm going to also show you the console of Oracle VM Server, which is where I will show you the VM agent that will be displayed there, which will communicate through an IP, a dedicated port with the infrastructure VM Server and VM Manager. So I'm going to minimize this and let's go to the console for VM server first. So here I've got a console for VM server. So this is a Dell Enterprise server. It's a Dell PowerEdge R815 server. So let me just expand that so that we can view it in a bigger screen. So as you could see here, details the static IP of the server, the server pool it is associated with. So this server pool gets created via 
the GUI of Oracle VM Manager, which is something I've shown you over here. And how it connects with the VM server is by the VM agent. You can see something called as OVS agent and it shows the status as running. All the VMs are running. It shows how many VMs are running. So presently there are zero VMs which are running the system memory, free memory and uptime of the server. So this is like a console, but it is based on a Linux OS. So you can go to the root of Linux by pressing Alt F2 and there you go and you can log in using the root user okay so like that you access it now this is what you also call it as a management domain so VM server is also called as the management domain which is something that manages the domains that resides on top of these physical infrastructure via the VM agent. So the domains that resides on top of that and align to the virtual machines are called as user domains or DOM U. Whereas this VM server related domain is called as DOM M which stands for domain management or management domain. Okay, now I've shown you the console for VM server. Now I'm going to quickly show you the console for Oracle VM manager. So you can simply log in over here. And now here presently one of the physical servers are running, but one of them is down. Okay, so it can be clearly seen over here. Once you have your server up and running, then you create a server pool. And that's how the connection of a VM server and VM manager is made. And you give a name to that server pool, which is displayed over here. That was something I've just shown you a little while ago, right? And then if you expand this, so this is the server pool that was shown there, if you recall. And that is the name I have given in terms of its domain. And then within that, I've created multiple VMs, as you could see. You can deploy in any number of virtual machines as long as the hardware supports. So here is the sequence. The first thing you do it is you connect via a server pool to the VM server. Once the server pool is there in place, then you go and discover your storage. So here is the place wherein you discover the storage. And once you have discovered the storage, let's say this is the local file system. So this is where you discover your storage. Once you have discovered the storage, then you create your repository and you attach that storage in your repository and the server pool that you have created. Okay. so. And then within that repository, after you have attached the storage and server pool, you can create and store the disk related to VMs or ISOs or your VM assemblies or VM templates. Okay. Then in order for communication to happen, you got to have the network in place. So you create your IP addresses or you can also create virtual NICs cards and then these are some things that you've got to assign it to your virtual machines while you're creating them so once you have your storage your server pools your networking then the next step is you go and create a new VM so let's say if I click on this particular VM or eBusiness suite I would be able to see the details of that So which is the domain and what is the best way to do it is open that in edit mode and it will show you a little more information. So these are 
in relation to what the VM is all about, the number of processor, RAM you have assigned, then the networks that you have created, you assign it over here. The disk, these are nothing but the virtual disk. Okay, you can also attach things like the physical disk or the CD, DVD to that, if at all you want to boot from that. And then you can choose for the boot order, how you want to boot and any other optional tags that you would like to give. And this Oracle VM Manager lets you access multiple hardware via VM agent deployed on top of multiple Oracle VM servers in your infrastructure. So the example I have shown you is one VM Manager having two physical servers being accessed via Oracle VM agent and each of these two physical machines have got Oracle VM server installed on top of them. In terms of my environment, I've got the disk associated with the machines itself. I don't have a storage area network in place, but optionally you can have a SAN environment or a NFS environment. And the browser that I've just shown you is something that is accessed here. So that's where it resides. And behind this browser and the VM manager, there would be a Oracle Enterprise SQL database and on top of that you will have a weblogic server managing the VM manager. So that's what the entire Oracle VM architecture is made up of. Now going forward I'm going to discuss each of these components in much more detail and we'll understand its functionality and features.